Good evening, fellow fishermen. Al Winco here with part one of three parts of our night fishing primer. It's beginning of June, the bass are in the post spawn phase, recovering, moving off the shorelines, and some good nighttime fishing is about to start. There's some basics with boat preparation for safety that I want to educate you anglers too. I have about 25 years of night fishing experience. I haven't done it for the last five, but now I'm getting back into it. So we'll start off with lights. You need to have good lighting in your boat at night. A flashlight is always handy. Another push button light is handy. Either one of these can be taped to a landing net. You can tape that flashlight to the net and then you can see the bass on the side of the boat, scoop them and net him safely. Interior boat lighting is very important, but first off, you want to make sure your running lights operate properly. First off, we're going to check our bow light. Red and green, on, off. Now we'll go back to the stern and check our transom light. Off back on, maybe difficult to see because it's still pretty light out. Okay. Now you want to make sure you have spare bulbs for these. The bow light usually takes a different light bulb than the transom light or stern light. I keep all my bulbs and fuses in a waterproof container. And we have regular bus fuses and plug-in fuses in this boat. Remember, 5 amps up to 20 amps. Very important that you have these and check the bulbs to make sure they work. Now we also have interior lighting in, the, in this boat. If you move around this way with the camera, I'll turn the bow lights on. There's one on this side and one on the other side. Now we'll come back to the console and you'll see two lights here. One here, and one on the inside. These really light up the inside of this boat at night. Now we'll go back to the dog box light. This is an inboard jet motor. All the angler has to do is rotate that up, the light goes on, and there's one on this side of the boat also. Very important is what batteries you draw your power from to operate your lights. I have a 36 volt trolling motor system in this boat. The three batteries are up in the front of this boat to balance the boat. Here's one of them. They happen to be a Trojan SCS225 deep cycle marine battery. There's one. The other two are up here. These batteries run the 36 volt trolling motor. They also operate the front bow. They operate the black lights. That's the way I have the boat wired so that my starting battery is used to start the boat. Some nights I do fish all night long. We'll have a, quite an amp draw on these batteries. These batteries have 225 reserve ampere hours and I doubt if we'll run those down, but I do not want to run down my starting battery and be in a situation where a thunderstorm comes up and I need to get off the water quickly and my main battery has been drawn down so it won't start the motor. I'd like to take a few moments to discuss black lights with you. I feel that a black light and fluorescent line at night is very important to watch your line where it enters the water. You can tell when your bait is on the bottom, 
slow falling baits like wacky worms and stick worms. Bass pick them up sometimes, your line will move left, move right, you know exactly what your bait is doing. Now through experience, I have two black lights on the boat. We have one in the rear, and one on the front. I put plexiglass plates on this boat because I don't want the suction cups on the edge of this. I've had them come loose before, so I have plenty of room to slide around. Now it's best to use some little moisture on your suction cups. Center, push down. We have a female receptacle back here. This also has a fluorescent light in the back. You may be able to see it here. Now the black light is on. Watch what happens to fluorescent line. It's still light out, so it's not going to be a graphic illustration here, but you'll get the point. You can see this is not fluorescent line up here where the leader is. That is fluorescent line. And you can see this 10, 15, even 20 feet out in the water on a clear night. Now we'll go to the bow light. This is an original Stan Sloan black light. I believe this is about 20 or 25 years old. Still works. This also has a black light which is on now and a fluorescent light. Leave the black light on. You can see this line glow. And as we move back to the regular non-fluorescent leader, at night that's impossible to see that. But as you get into the fluorescent, fluorescent line, it glows. This is also, we have a receptacle up in the bow of the boat, and both of these run off the trolling motor batteries. Here's a nifty little trick to light your marker buoys at night. I personally like to fish high spots, rock piles in the middle of the lake, uh, shorelines once in a while, but usually it's the offshore structure that will produce fish. We have about 17 different high spots that we fish and rotate during a the night. These are four inch glow sticks. The standard marker buoy, which I've modified a little bit, has my name on it, I have rubber bands on either end of it. All you need to do with these glow sticks just crack them, shake them, and they'll glow for four hours. Through trial and error, we found this is the best way to affix your marker buoys, and I'll tell you why in a second. We had these on top, which is fine, but as you know, the marker buoys spin as it goes down the water. Now if you get a little windy out there at night, the waves will cause this to turn. It may flip the buoy and the lights are down shining into the lake. When they're on the side, no matter what this marker buoy does, I can always see these. On a clear night, believe it or not, I can see these lights from almost 50 yards away. And these glow sticks glow for approximately four hours. 
This will help you stay on those spots and keep rolling in those bass. I consider this to be a very important part of your night light fishing apparatus. This is a QB Marine from Brinkman. It's a 3 million candle power light. Now this requires a 10 amp fuse. Very bright light, it's non-glare lens on it. I'm currently waiting for a 10 amp circuit breaker to come and a female receiver for this plug. I'm going to run approximately 12 feet of number 10 wire from the battery to the console and I'm going to install the circuit breaker there and add some additional light onto this. This light will serve three purposes. If there's engine problems and I have to get back there and light it up, this will light up the entire engine compartment. If for some reason we are fishing a shoreline, which we rarely do with a lot of overhanging trees, and myself or an angler gets a lure hung on the trees, you can light up the night with this light. Third and most important, and I've had this happen before, you're on the water, it's two, three o'clock in the morning, and here comes some half-asleep boater that doesn't pay attention to your bow or stern light, and he's bearing down on you, and when he gets to 50 yards, I get a little bit of nervous, and I hit him with this light. It usually wakes them up, they veer off. And I have personally had this happen to me about 15 years ago in a foggy night in the lake. In our first video, we talked about various boat lighting, and I mentioned the need for a 3 million candle power spotlight. It was not rigged up, but now it is. I took one of my leads and ran it directly to one of my three Trojan SS-225 deep cycle batteries. There's the receptacle for the plug, and I put a 10 amp circuit breaker in here, which it calls for. I finished it off with a piece of diamond plate. Also extended the wire on this plug. This is a little bit of a, a Franken rig here because I don't have the correct wire mold. But I already had the two holes in the boat to hold the cover support. I'll show you for the reason this in a second. This plug will pull out of this very easily. Now we have our spotlight hooked up. Take this. We like to ride it right alongside the passenger seat. With the extension I have on this cord, we can reach anywhere inside the motor, either side of the boat, or I can go right up to the front of the boat and reach anywhere in the front with this light. And that's our 3 million candle power spotlight.
Here we are with part two of our tackle preparation for night fishing video presentation. I've selected six different baits. The first being a magnum stickworm on a four offset hook. You want that bait to hang straight. And if you're going to use this in weeds, you can needle stick the hook. Pull the worm back slightly. Just put the tip of that worm in there. Very important bait. I'll fish this even down to 20 feet of water on a still night on ledges and rock piles. Let this bait slowly go down with the tail wiggling. That's one of my choices. You can see all these rods have fluorescent line on them for use with the black light. There's a spinning rod, but this is a heavy duty spinning rod with a 4000 Shimano sustain and a bubble crawl on a 5 16 ounce swim bait head. This bait is virtually snagless in rock piles, wood, and weeds. Great nighttime bait right here. Those claws will float up on the bottom. Bass will hold on to it. Now using your crayfish hatch, new moon and full moon, Maybe a small new population of crayfish, therefore a tube may be the deal. This is a tasty tube supreme on a quarter ounce flutter head. And I fish this on a spinning rod. Next up is a short arm spinner bait. This is a specific drop bait. It's a half ounce short arm with a number five black bait blade, 30 strand skirt with a black rub trailer. This bait falls almost parallel with the bottom. And on the fall, due to the design of the arm, this bait goes straight up, the blade goes straight up in the air and spins. When you pick it off the bottom, you can feel that blade thump, 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 thump. Pick it up slightly. This is a pull and drop bait. Very effective at night. Okay. Here we have the new bait. The 10 inch Predator swimming worm on a quarter ounce swim bait head with a 7 Mustad Ultra Point hook. Again, this can be re rigged, texposed, and then needle stick the hook back into the bait for weedless action. Bass grab it, go the bass every time. Great nighttime bait. Last on my list would be a drop shot. I'm going to refer to this as a sandbag weight, but there's actually small bee shots in this. This came out many, many years ago, and it really lets you come up and down these rocky ledges because it's flexible and it reduces a lot of snags in the crevices. The drop shot bait I've selected is the six and a half inch shaky snake. I have it approximately 12 inches above the weight. As you can see, this bait is very, very lively, and I'm basically doing nothing to it. These are the six baits that I would choose to night fish. That's not to say there's not others. I'm a big surface fisherman. That being said, at night I've caught my share of bass on black jitterbugs. Never any big bass. But there's always a problem, especially with two people in the boat. You see a strike, you feel a strike, you set the hook, you miss the fish, and that top water lure comes back like a guided missile at your face in the middle of the night, and you end up with treble hooks in you. That's why I'm not set up with any particular nighttime lures at this time. Hi, I'm Howie Thompson from Winko's Custom Fishing Lures. And uh, I'm gonna present you some of the lures that I like to use when out in the boat at night, night fishing. Um, one thing I wanna stress, it's a good idea for anglers uh, you know, if you have two guys on a boat fishing, to fish different lures. This way, you can develop a pattern quicker and easier. 
The first lure I'd like to show you is a seven and one quarter inch predator swimming worm. This is rigged on a three thirty second ounce flutter head. The reason why I like it on a three thirty second or even a sixteenth is because of the slow fall. Bass hit it on a slow fall. And it could be it could be uh, you could needle stick that hook so you could fish it in weeds and you could fish it in wood. You don't have to worry about getting hung up. You could also fish a text pose with the hook out, but that's only when you're not in that heavy cover like weeds and wood. The next lure is a shaky snake worm, but I'm using it as a drop shot, and this is the five inch model. Um, I could go down to a four inch model uh, if I wanted to but that's a wonderful bait to use at night. Black drop shot worm. Next is one of my favorites. This is the finesse craw jig. This is a 5 16 ounce finesse craw jig. One of the nice things about it is the dual flexible wire weed guards. You can angle these weed guards however you'd like. These weed guards permit a solid hook set, but most importantly, they help reduce snags. Uh, as you can see, this this jig is actually a little beat up. I've used it many, many, many times. I've put a lot of bass on it, but it's a great jig. Of course, the color black for night. And here I have a five and a quarter inch Magnum Wacky Stickworm. And this is on a Weedless Wonder hook. You can see the two wire weed guards. Excellent for around weed beds, wood, and it helps uh, from getting snagged up in the rocks when it's down on the bottom. Next is the shaky snake worm as a shaky head jig color black. This is the largest model right here and I have it on a 3 8 ounce enticer jig head. Once on the bottom it's going to stand straight up in the air. It won't roll over on its side. That tail is just going to go back and forth. Excellent jig, excellent worm. Lastly, I have a one ounce Night Stalker spinnerbait. That is tangled in my line. Hold on, folks. Here we go. The Night Stalker spinnerbait. This is a one ounce model. Has a number eight Colorado blade. You will feel this thing thumping through the water as you slow roll it along the bottom. Um, it has a black rub trailer with a pink tail. Um, it's an excellent bait to use at night. Just slow roll it really, really slow along the bottom. And that big Colorado blade is just gonna, just gonna go thumping along. Um, I really like fishing these.
One thing you want to have with you when you go night fishing uh, is mosquito repellent. This is repel. This is off deep woods. There's a variety of different uh, uh, brands, uh, but this is repel. One thing I want to say about it is you don't want to spray it on your skin because it contains DEET and the DEET will get into your bloodstream and it's not good for you. Um, but you want, to, you want to spray it, like I'm going to spray it on my hat, I'll spray it on my front, on my clothes, down by my feet, and I got to make sure I don't get it on my skin, get my shoes. A little goes a long way, my shoulders, and then once that's done, you have your fishing buddy spray it on your back. One thing I have to say about Repel and Deep Woods and those products is being out on the water, I have not had any problems with mosquitoes ever once we put that on. When we first pull up to the, the boat ramp, put the boat in the water, we usually get bombed with mosquitoes, but as soon as we spray that stuff on us, we don't have any more problems.